What is up, everybody, and welcome to the DNVR Nuggets Podcast Tuesday edition presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top rated sportsbook app. Download it right now. Use promo code DNVR when we do. And then bet on the NBA. Why not? It's a lot of fun, uh, and, and you'll enjoy it. There's uh, Gail is, is our super producer. I can't believe you showed up your beautiful face today. You're the best looking one out of all of us. Why are you? Uh, there you go. He is, he is on the show today, helping us with the music. Uh, and producing the show. I'm joined by the referee himself here to talk about all the latest rule changes to the NBA. It's Brendan Vogt. Uh, yeah, that's right. The traditional color scheme of any ref in any league. Um, I do think your audio, Adam, is a little... Uh, I had trouble hearing you. We'll do it live. What, what about now? How am I sounding now, Kelly? Great. I think it's just the music. Like for some reason with StreamYard, whenever there's music and volume, it messes up. Um, but we have a special guest who I thought wasn't going to be ready for 15 minutes. But you know what? If he's 15 minutes early, he's 10 minutes late. That's that's Miroslav's uh, – that's his MO. Serbian corner with the homie Miroslav. Everybody welcome him in. There it is. Beautiful. And so forth. You're trying to win. I, I can tell you're trying to win the Serbian audience early because you have been put in an uncomfortable position today to try to explain <laughs> uh, why some people are hating on Jokic, why some people are not. And you're in that you you have to sort of play both sides today, I imagine. So um, go ahead and get those brownie points early. Yeah, I, I will try to I will try to explain everything to to explain all angles on this very complicated, very complex issue. We'll get there in just a second. First, though, I just want to know, you know, how are you doing? And is there any part of you? I mean, we've had a lot of basketball over the last like year and a half, basically. Is there any part of you that has sort of enjoyed sleeping in? Uh, actually, I'm completely broken. I still wake up at 5 a.m. 5 a.m. every morning with no reason at all, and I, I just wake up and and could cannot get back to bed. It's it's completely crazy. Do you After do you just get some shots up? 5 a.m. shots up like Jimmy and Kobe. That's what they would do, man. Okay. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of things, Miroslav, we're excited because there's a full slate of things we're going to talk about. I'm going to tease them all because we're going to obviously start with the Jokic stuff, but I want to tease the NBA lottery is tonight. We're going to talk about who it is that we should be rooting for, you know, what's interesting about it. Sham Sharania has also said that the NBA is going to enforce some important league changes. I want to talk about those because I think they really apply to Denver quite a bit. Uh, ratings are up. Surprise, surprise. No Lakers, no Nets. What are we doing here? The ratings are up. This is insane. Portland is looking for some new coaches. Chauncey, Mike D'Antoni, Becky Hammond, a lot of Denver connections there. Um, it, it turns out our tourist Karnasovas is interested in Brian Shaw. We've got that. Mahmoud Abdul Rauf wants to help Ben Simmons with his shot. And then, of course, we're going to talk about Will Barton, the wind chime that hopped in yesterday that Will Barton is hiring a new um, uh, a new pair of agents, a really new agency, CAA. So we're going to talk about what all of that could, uh, could mean. But first, we have to start. I wanted to give it some distance. We could have brought you on a week ago, Miroslav, and asked you the immediate reaction. But I have a feeling, I have a sense, that the immediate reaction to Jokic's decision to not play in the Olympics probably wouldn't have been as nuanced or as deep as the one week later reaction. First thing I want to ask you, though, is, so Jokic is not participating in the Olympics. Were you personally surprised when you found out that he was not playing? To tell you the truth, I I had like 90% chance he wouldn't be playing. I, I had enough data from, from, from US telling me that there is no way that would be happening. I, I kept those 10% because I know uh, how crazy us Serbs are. So there is always a chance to, to do something uh, uh, completely out of order, just to just to to do what we feel is right, and uh, this is this is the reason that morning when 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 the news broke, I personally felt a, a lot of sadness. Mm -hmm. I, I really was sad about that decision, even though I completely understand it, and I, even though I am uh, I am fighting for for his right to do what he did. Uh, with uh, with everything I have, because I completely understand it. Uh, that uh, special uh, part of it that he and his wife Natalia are expecting a, a child somewhere before the the Olympics is something Nikola didn't want to mention at all because he keeps his privacy 
uh, to himself but his his father bane at one point broke up and he said listen guys they're expecting a baby so please please stop with all the all the nonsense about it so yeah it's it's a complex feeling you know sadness and and uh, pr i'm really proud of what he did at the same time and he really did uh, for some people in serbia turn from national hero to the enemy of the state within a seven days span which is of course completely crazy Miroslav, I'm curious if you could flesh out for us sort of why that is, what that dynamic is. Is it accurate to frame it in Serbian basketball culture, international play, simply is prioritized more than any, any league play, even the NBA? Yeah, there are actually several layers to that. First layer is just the normal international layer because you have these basketball nations, meaning Serbia, Spain, Greece, Argentina, Brazil, Croatia, Slovenia, these are basketball countries where the, the uh, national team pride is really strong mm -hmm. and uh, no league whatsoever is, uh, uh, is nearly important as what those two weeks per year the national team can bring, uh, meaning happiness to the, to the people watching. Now, this is just one part of it. The other part of it is Yugoslavian... Uh, history of basketball, which is now 50 years long. It was 51 years ago when Yugoslavia was world champion for the first time in Argentina, 1970. In, back in the 70s and the, and the 80s, it was a communist country, Yugoslavia, where people were free to go abroad and play in other countries, but they needed to be 27 years old to do that. Hmm. So they would be obligated to be in the country before they leave at uh, hmm. some mature age. And Is this the of same course, thing? well, it was with Artur with Arvidas. I know it's obviously a different country, but was that that the reason? It's it's, it's pretty similar? it's pretty similar. It's pretty, pretty similar. similar. Yes, yeah. yes. Actually, this is something that stopped in in late eighties. In the late eighties, okay. it, it became more liberal. So back then, in seventies and eighties, you had national teams that would assemble four months before the FIBA tournament. Can you imagine that? They stop their, their in-season games and then just join other teammates for four months, train as hell, and, and get super ready for the tournament. Now, the times have really changed since, since then. In the 90s, the situation was uh, also complicated because we have all the wars and all the atrocities. So when Serbia uh, had to pause for uh, international play for three years from 92 to 94 everybody was waiting for that 95 european championship in greece and that uh, european championship that serbia won back then was was a huge accomplishment for everybody in serbia because people were living really really bad lives really really bad economic uh, times and to be honest even today 25 years after that the situation is of course better but it's not nearly good enough for people to say, "Hey, come on, guys! It's just sports. Let's 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 give it a go." Right. People right. need that kind of vent, that kind of uh, uh, how to say to to prove themselves they're worthy. You know, right. we are. Yeah, we are small, but we are the best in the world in basketball or volleyball or water polo or whatever. So it's it's a big a big part of national pride. So uh, from two thousand one. We have the third era. I'm I'm now going full Jeff Morton on you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> From 2001. That's yeah, to the king. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. From 2001, FIBA changed the rules for the for the tournaments. They moved all the tournaments from June, th that was the original date for the tournaments, to September, to to accommodate M NBA players to be able to come. Uh, and play for the tournaments because they would have enough time to rest between the seasons. But that made a different problem because June, June tournaments had a lot of players without contracts that were going to play for the national teams and show themselves on this big, uh, mm. how to say, fair of basketball, world, worldwide fair of basketball and earn big contracts. Now when the tournaments are in September, now guys already have their contracts in June and some of them, especially young guys with no big contracts behind them, 
will just choose to skip and and take care of their bodies you know to mm, yeah. to, to get better so there are so many layers to this so many reasons why the, the times have changed but as i said with 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 all those games all those minutes nicola played for the last 10 months and uh, for uh, for what's going to happen to him on on the family field i have to say i completely understand him and uh, i completely understand people that are sad because i am sad too but that's what what you're going to do we have it, bogdan bogdanovic playing it, in atlanta yeah. and what's the chances for him to play he's our right. second best player now and he's, he's hurt. now in the eastern conference finals so but he's also hurt do? i mean that, that's yeah, it. second time this is, season yeah and so i know that he has been committed to the team but you know that commitment we'll have to see if he can even play i thought in that game seven he was so bad i, I don't even think he should have played they tried him out i get why you try it but That's he right. couldn't even walk <laughs> he watched walked him and he was hobbling um i want to go back though here's an interesting thing that i think makes it so difficult to this conversation so difficult america is so isolated from the rest of the world I mean, we got canada above us and mexico below but our history you know goes in our the country is so large but also there's just not this proximity. So when you look at Europe, it's so far removed that all these countries or whatever, of course, we talk about the ignorant Americans can't even tell Serbia from Russia or whatever, but you know, it's so removed in Serbia, you know, surround a small country and surrounded by several others, of course. And, you know, there's a, a European tradition. I don't think Americans relationships, to international basketball just isn't there. Like mm -hmm. with it, it's like, the Olympics was fun, and I think 10, 15 years ago, the Redeem team was – there was like this sort of like semi-national pride, I think we felt, where it's like, hey, we've taken back our game and we're proving, reproving we can do this. But as time has gone on, even that feels a little weird. And some of this is because of recent American history and, and just, I think, a little bit of a disillusionment from especially the new generation of adults, the millennial generation, of like national it's pride. But – um this is it's it's interesting to me to see there's such a thin line between national pride and nationalism or or you know like like almost too much of it and, and part of when i'm looking at these interactions between like why the u.s doesn't necessarily understand why serbians are so hard i think it comes down to that is serbians seem to have a different level of pride in their country and how the sports translate to that than maybe the united states has where they're you know, very critical of their own country. Yeah, well, big thing about it is 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 low living standards because this this is really important for for this kind of uh, uh, feeling to prevail. You know, because mm. you know, if you lose the game and then you go to your you know good job and your good home and and everything mm. is fine around you, you have to to uh, how to say you have to uh, to think of problems. To have because you have none really interesting you know, com comparing to somebody who have real issues every mm -hmm. day uh then then it's it's this is why i said all of these countries i mentioned serbia argentina greece spain all these countries have certain problems certain certain economic issues that also rises the the, mm -hmm. the pride of nation in, in this there are some really good pieces about it i'm not i'm not clever i just read some 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 stuff about it yeah I, i'm always curious to what extent this could be described or viewed as like almost like a survival instinct right uh especially in, in an area of europe where like culture actual physical borders everything's been so malleable for so long and, and fighting and holding on to your identity your people it, it in it, it's just sort of been this ongoing process since like the dawn of time. And I just wonder how much of this like sort of stems, you know, like being Serbian, I, I just think it means something else to Serbian people these days than, than Americans that are at least my age or, or around my well, age. The easy way to look at this is I think that Serbians look at, you know, there was the headline, you know, it's, Jokic is a uh, traitor, right, to, to Serbia. No, but LeBron, I think in the Redeem team and Kobe and those guys, I think there was a certain like we're representing our country and basketball in the United States, and there was a sense of pride. I don't know that there is that. I don't know that LeBron is looking at this, skipping out of the Olympics and saying, I'm letting my country down. Right. Whereas right. like for, for Serbia, it sounds like there is this like sort of, you know, hey, you can't let us down in this way. I just, LeBron, Kevin Durant is not, I think he's playing primarily because he loves basketball. And there's this like great opportunity for him to play. Yeah. And the, the reason for the redeemed team was the fact that they've lost 
two consecutive world championship and one Olympic Games. And they said, okay, that's what's enough, enough. We know we are the best. Now we will bring out our big guns and, and win easily. And the US, of course, can win easily every time they bring the big guns. Actually, the team that is going to these Olympics looks quite impressive. One guy I was hoping not to see on the Olympics against Serbia was Kevin Durant because he completely destroyed us. He annihilated us in 2016, just dropping 30 feet trees, you know, with the hand in his face, no problems at all. And uh, yeah, now, now, even with Nikola, even with Bogdan, we would still be fighting for silver. We wouldn't be fighting for gold. Let's be realistic. But uh, you know, Olympic silver is a, is a big is a big thing. It's not it's not uh, something to to say. Uh, so so let me let me ask this, Miroslav. Is so, what is the degree to people's frustration with Jokic? Is it a small group of people? Is it a majority of people? Is it loud and vocal? Um, what's the sense you get of, of the degree of the, the upsetness at him right now? Yeah, one thing I'm not sure you will be loving to hear is i was thinking about this for the, for the past week what is the percentage of nikola jokic fans in serbia that are actually denver nuggets fans mm. and that percentage is quite quite low right right this is this is in reality we have seven million people in serbia and probably three million of them every morning reads the morning newspaper or go to the internet to see how many points rebounds assists nikola had and if nuggets win won uh, during that uh, process but uh, if you see our our podcast nugget serbia even after a year of of work and we are really putting a lot of hard work into it and and trying to do uh, the best we can and promote it the best we can we still have this core of about 1000 people that watches every show and maybe 2000 people when we have you know uh, fair weather fans that will come and and just listen to the show now uh, by the way, Nugget Serbia is coming back on Sunday. We are nice previewing plug. the. Did you see he got a flex, seamless, a flex seamless, and a plug in one. You, like, you, wow. you didn't, you, you didn't feel it, right? <laughs> we, we'll be we'll be previewing the 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 qualification tournament for the for the Olympics. So we will be covering Serbian national team during the the qualifications and hopefully during the the Olympic tournament. All uh, I want to say about this real quick is vote. You've been on a couple times, right? What's that? I've the been on Serbia, what? Nugget Serbia podcast. Yes, of course. Yeah. Eric's been on a few times. I think Dev's been on. Harrison's been on. I've been on once. I got invited one time here. So what is going on here? Where everybody gets the call. I check my voicemails. I check my email. I don't see anything from you. I don't know what's going on here. Listen, you've been really nice to Serbian fans in the last lockdown nuggets. You've been talking about Jokic in his absence. So you, you've earned another <laughs> visit sometime this year. I cannot yeah. promise you man, okay. no, how soon, but we'll see. We'll see. There you go. Okay. Uh, Didn't you so, get on uh, national TV, Adam? I don't that's think true. You, yeah, that was I true. think you're doing just fine. All right. Yeah. O only once, though. But what you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's let's get back to the point. So we have guy. one thousand guys that are probably watching every game every night. You know that know everything about Nikola. Know how how tough this season was for him. And let's let's imagine that there are ten times more guys like this. They just don't like our show, whatever. And then let's go to 10 times more than that of guys that don't know how the podcasts work or don't right. use internet or whatever. Sure. That's still 100,000 people comparing to 3 million people yeah, that, yeah. Is, that is uh, uh, Nikola Jokic fans. So you can imagine all of those people that are not really Denver Nuggets fans, they will, they will just care about... You know, Michael Malone didn't give didn't make him a uh, favor when he said that Serbs never sit sit down on the on the game you know that was not good marketing from Mike Malone's size I called him Mike sorry mm. Michael. <laughs> yeah careful dude yeah so yeah that, that that's about it yeah I what about this how long do you think this is going to linger because I know when he missed out what was the was it the FIBA World Cup that he missed the last time or he skipped out on you know people were really upset that time and it seemed right. like by the time the season came around people were like well what am I going to do not watch and this yeah. or that do you get he, this he, he actually only skipped 2017 European Championship and the only reason people were mad was the fact that we had like eight injured guys back 
the back mm. for those European Championship, and we still got the silver medal. We still had like like two possession game uh, lost to 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 Dontich and and Dragic in the final game, and Anthony Anthony what's the name the Nuggets legend, oh, Mislov is gonna kill me. Randolph? Well, it was, was Anthony, it? Anthony Randolph. Yeah, he yeah, was yeah. playing for Slovenia. That's, that's, well. that's right. Yeah, he somehow was playing there. Crazy. <laughs> Never been to Slovenia in his life. <laughs> Completely crazy. So dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you know, you can imagine with with that. With if Nikola played back then, we would get uh, the, the gold easily, and his legacy in Serbia would be so much stronger than today. But people don't. People didn't understand then, like they don't understand. Today, that was his last year of his rookie contract. He was pushing for the next contract and for being the franchise player that he, of course, uh, 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 made him to be. So you know that's that's what what you're gonna do. You no, know? yeah. he got enough hate for not playing well enough for somebody's taste in 2019 World Cup, even though you know he was tired and even though the the tactics around him wasn't wasn't made. You know, like yeah. like he should be. Actually, Igor Kokoshkov is now the coach of national team right. because he's the guy that has the, the biggest chance of, of making good good playing around him and other NBA stars, of course. Is this uh is this unprecedented, Mirosov? I mean, obviously Jokic, his talent, his success in the NBA unprecedented for a Serbian basketball player. Do you have examples of 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 anyone uh, you know similarly important to the team maybe opting opting out? Of course, Vlade Divac skipped a bunch of bunch of tournaments, and uh, he wasn't too too old back then. He was like 29, 30 when we stopped playing for the national team, and then returned at the age of thirty five, mm. just to get another world goal, whatever you know. And that's that that's it. So yeah, of course, he he is not the first guy to to miss a tournament. Of course, there is many years ahead of him to to uh, to get that uh, uh, national legacy. Right. That I really hope he will get, because you know, on the pantheon of Serbian players, there will always be these world champions and these European champions and Olympic champions. So he needs that part to 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 become a, the complete legend of, of sport in Serbia. So the chat has been, I think, mostly very cordial, and I appreciate everybody that's following along. That because I know emotions are really high here. I think I'm going to trigger them off, but I'm really just trying to ask a question here because. You know, I, I think there's a couple things going at play here. One, it's very difficult sometimes. Oh my gosh, look at this flex. He is so good at this. Oh my god. He's so good. He is. Give us a quick review. Oh, yeah, what are you talking about? All right, you took the, oh, yeah. the Joker, the Joker uh, <laughs> very, drink right very here. common here. Come on, guys. Very common here. All right, give it one a scale of one to ten. How how good is this? And also, can you like hide this in like a teddy bear and ship it to us? So because I know it's hard <laughs> to ship things, but I think as, I think I think Nick Milan is already working on it. It's not yes. going to be easy because you know it. It it has some kind of e explosive, uh, how to say, uh, uh, <laughs> you, you know that ingredient. This, this, yeah. this thing can can explode. You know if yeah. if, if it's mixed too, too hard. So who knows? Yeah. Hopefully it will it will be okay. Um. So here's here's the Sorry. question I, I want to ask is, you know, sometimes it's difficult to separate. Are you you, you mentioned you're very sad. And I think sad and anger live side by side. And sometimes I think people, it can easily morph from one into the other. But one of the things I have seen so much, I've seen people say, is, you know, Jokic does, clearly doesn't love Serbia. This is the pro, This is like the critique they have of him. And one of the things, and one of the things I think about this is, maybe like, you could just as easily make the argument Serbia doesn't actually love Jokic with the response that they've had, meaning. If it was so conditional that you only like him if he does a certain thing, that would be a very conditional form of love that I think is probably not, not so meaningful. So I don't want to speak for the Serbians because I can't I can only empathize with how they feel, but I don't really know what it is they're feeling. But to me, I have a hard time reconciling that you used to love him until he didn't do the exact thing that you were hoping he would do, and maybe will do again in the future. To me, I just can't that's the thing that from the outside I have a hard time reconciling. Yeah, it th that thing is overblown because of the media. Media today works on clicks, so everybody is pushing those headlines that are supposed to trigger people and and make them click on the news and 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 then not yeah. read it at all right. because you no, know, that's that's the easy path. So I blame the media a lot for this because I haven't 
I almost haven't seen a single a single um, headline that that was trying to 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 shut the, the fire down. It was only flaming it up, and uh, that's that's a big big uh, big problem I have with media uh, about this. On the other hand, I I think it's completely unfair to say that Nikola doesn't love Serbia or Serbia doesn't love Nikola because you know that love hate uh, love hate uh, ratio people have when there is too much passion is really close right this, this this can move to the other direction so fast there is no problem about it and i've heard some some uh, uh, thoughts from the us side that nikola didn't want to play in 2019 for the national team at all that it uh, it was looking like he wasn't uh, wishing he was there i don't think that's true at all because you know he's a smart guy and he has a lot of smart people around him that uh, that give him good advices and uh, he wouldn't go and play a tournament he doesn't want to play just to calm some internet warriors that are you know pushing right. the narrative around against him i'm 100 percent sure he he loves playing with the, the national team he loves playing with other with the other guys and uh, if you watch if you would watch now the national team how they play that's that's actually nicola's dream everybody's playing the right way it's a beautiful beautiful kind of game the only thing we're missing at the moment is uh, some really good shooters we don't have a lot of good shooters at the moment so we have a lot of uh, uh, perfectly made corner trees that just doesn't go in but hopefully more of them will get in by the time of the tournament well let's take our quick break on the other side i want to ask miroslav a, a, a couple more questions one of them about just paparazzi it seems like maybe the paparazzi has shown up in serbia a little bit more so I'm, maybe that's maybe i'm wrong but i want to ask about that and then obviously we're going to talk about all those other topics i previewed but we'll take our first break we'll be back in just a minute don't go anywhere Breckenridge Brewery is the official beer of DNVR. Regular seltzers are now being sold in the bar. Obviously, you guys know we love Breck. We love seltzers. We've told you about this leading up to the summer. Uh, summer's here. Breckenridge Brewery is teaming up with the National Parks Conservation Association. Tragic fires in Colorado are absolutely devastating. And uh, this is one of the many reasons that Breck is donating 1% of all their profits this summer to the National Parks Conservation Association. That's right. If you buy one pint or a pack of Breck brews, you are donating 1% of that to our great outdoors. We're going to get involved with this at the bar. We'll find ways to collaborate. Um, but just for now, one of the best ways you can support Breck and Ridge, us, the great outdoors, buy some beer, man, or check out their farmhouse. It's open, socially distanced, beautifully set up, uh, or you can still order corps, curbside pickup from 12 to 8. Call 303-803-1380 from 12 to 8 p.m. for pickup and use code DNVR to save $5. Uh, if you are looking to get a better insurance, just check out Gabby Insurance. It literally stands for getting a better insurance. They're not insurance providers. They're essentially price shoppers. They want you to know there are hundreds of companies out there claiming to compare auto and home insurance rates, but there's only one who actually does it. Do it with Gabby. Uh, Drew Kreisman, AJ Hayfley, Lindsay Sauer, they've all saved hundreds on their yearly rates. Eric Weedham, you know him as D-Line. He loves when we bring him up on this ad. He saved a lot of money himself. Um, not really sure who was stealing from him before, but he's got a much better insurance now with Gabby. Maybe we'll get him on vacation. Still muted. We'll do it live. I was just highlighting some of the questions here. And, and by the way, guys, like, I, I totally get it. Like, a lot of people are saying you don't understand. I really don't. And I, I'm i fully, like, capable of admitting this. I don't understand it. And people try to do the inverse, you know, well, what if he skipped the season or this or that? Honestly, I think if and, – and this might actually happen. I would not be surprised if maybe two years from now you get to the World Cup and Jokic does play in it and then miss the start of the season or something. Like, the, the Nuggets kind of, kind of agree, like, hey, let's – He's going to miss camp, and then in camp, he's going to be, he might miss a few games as he gets his legs under him. I actually think that will happen at some point, especially if Denver continues to go deep into the playoffs. So we'll see. We'll see how it shakes out. Miroslav, do you feel like, first of all, Olympics or World Cup, if you had to pick between the two, which one would you take? Honestly, World Cup. And the only reason for that is because we have better chance of winning the gold on the World Cup. Mm. The US usually doesn't bring the, the, the the a team for the world cup 
but historically speaking, Serbia or Yugoslavia has only one Olympic gold, and it was from the 1980 Olympics in in uh, Moscow when the U.S. team didn't play. But who right. cares? Right. You could have you could have came. You didn't. Sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> what, yeah, that, that's the only Olympic gold for like an era from before we were all born. Yeah, <laughs> you got us. Yeah, you no, got. I, I was born. I was born. Come on. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm Jeff sure you, Morton age. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure you were celebrating that one uh, quite a bit. <laughs> in, yeah, from, I was. I was one from the crib. Uh, um, yeah, so, what about the pod? I've seen these videos up on Reddit, I and mean, some of them have made their way to Twitter of Jokic just sitting in chairs with friends. And I'm thinking these don't look like friends of his that are filming these. These look like people in the bushes. Is have you been able to tell? Is there more paparazzi around Jokic over the last two weeks than than what you have seen before? Well, full disclosure, I wasn't one of the paparazzi's. That <laughs> make those Good photos. to know. We were worried. Just <laughs> just to be completely yeah. frank. I, I haven't even been to Sombor. Fun fact, Nicola was in my Panchevo two days ago. I, I have no idea. I had no idea. I didn't in your, my, in your what? In my hometown of Panchevo. Oh, he okay, was on, okay. on the horse races on my in my hometown. And you didn't know. So, no, I had no idea. Oh, I, I, I I've learned of it like two hours too late. So yeah, he came to see me and I didn't go there to, to see him yet. So, so it's a long summer. We'll we'll see we'll see about it. But I wonder if you just get the sense of, you know, I, I wonder what the summer is like. Because at some point, you know, we always get the story and it's a romantic one of like, you know, Jokic in Sambor, nobody will bother him and he'll do this. But Sambor's not it's much it's a small city, but it's not so small that they are like they can build a fortress around outside influences. And he is now the MVP. He is a high profile person now because of skipping out on the Olympics and now having a baby. Just can you tell, is there any sense you can get of whether or not his peace is being disturbed in ways you maybe didn't, it wasn't in the years past? Well, I'm sure there are some, some journalists trying to, trying to disturb him. And I know he has some, some people around that will make sure that nobody's really disturbing him but you know you have those big zoom cameras right now yeah, so yeah. you can make a good photo from from 100 yards away uh, everybody knows where nicola hangs out every, hang, hangs out every day it's not a secret everybody knows that and everybody can can walk to him and uh, get an autograph or you know shake his hand it's not a problem it, it really isn't a problem it's just if you're trying to to dig up some dirt on right, him or right. something like that. This is this is you know the what we call yellow card in in football I mean, or what yeah, you call soccer okay, for some yeah. reason. My understanding is there was like an unspoken sort of agreement with LeBron and the people of Akron that for a long time he was coming around Akron and for the most part you let LeBron have his lunch or whatever. That's what folks in Akron told me when I was there. Wasn't writing anything, just happened to be in Akron. But uh, is that similar to the dynamic in Sambar? I mean people generally out of out of a spirit of this thing respect his space for the most part from what i've heard from vlade divac who who was playing in in the nba for so long he always said that the level of crazy for celebrities in the us and in europe can be can be matched at all because everybody is much more laid back in europe concerning celebrities right people right, are right. not screaming at them in, in the streets of course everybody is smiling and you know shaking their heads uh, to to say they 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 recognize who that is but uh, but uh, no no real i mean i guess these these couple of days and it will end for sure within a week uh, they they might be somebody trying to be stupid and just shout something nasty at Nicola or his family or whatever, but uh, I don't think uh, I don't think uh, this is a common thing in Sombor right. for sure. Right. Yeah. Um, let's move on now and talk about the, the Olympic team that is there for Serbia. You know, so no Jokic, Bogdanovic. I know he's committed, but we'll see how healthy he can get. Who else is on the squad, and and how do they look in your opinion? Yeah, so two guys you know are Boban Marjanovic and Nemanja Bjelica, and they will be very important for the team, of course. Another guy I would urge you to take a look at, look at in this squad is Filip Petrushev. He is a combo four and five player who was the MVP of the ABA League, the same league where Nikola Jokic was MVP right. back in 2015. 
So this guy is amazing. He used to play. He played one year at Gonzaga, and then because of the COVID, he came back to Serbia and started playing professionally in Mega, the same club right. where Nikola yeah. played. And he's really, really impressive. He's really good. And he should be somewhere in the late 20s in this draft. So Nuggets could actually pick him up. And that would be super, super interesting because I have a lot of, I have uh, better things to tell you about him than what I had about Poku a year, a year before. Really? He's a really, really uh, complete player. Is at he the age of 21. Exactly. What, what position is he again? He is combo four, four, four or five. Okay. All right. Well, he's like 27, right? 21. 20, oh, 21. That's right. I'm thinking of, uh, thinking of Beach. Uh, Okay, well, um, well, that'll be interesting. Do you feel like do they have a shot at the silver? Do they have a? Sh I mean, what what are their eye? Where do you think they'll be ranked? You know, uh, to be what? honest, I, I didn't I didn't dive in enough into other teams to to tell you what are Serbian real odds okay. for this tournament. I can tell you that Spain has all of their stars, all of them, even Pogasol at age forty nine or whatever is playing. And Argentina has Luis Cola at age 43 or whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. As well. 40s. Yeah. So, you know, everybody everybody is playing. I, I don't know about France. I'm not sure France will be super strong this time around. So, yeah, out of that pool of Spain, Serbia, Argentina, Lithuania, I would say you have a silver medalist between those teams. So vote and, and Miroslav as well. Team USA, it looks like, has solidified their roster. I, I might be mistaken here, but I think these are the guys that are committed. Kevin Durant, James Harden, pretty good start. Uh, Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday. Kevin Love, Bam Adebayo, Damian Lillard and Devin Booker. Bradley Beal, Draymond Green, Jason Tatum, and Brooke Lopez. That's a pretty good – like I, you know, I didn't know how this was going to shake out because there were so many injuries. And you think with Team USA, I wouldn't be surprised if this was like the worst team they fielded. I don't think this is the worst team by any means. In fact, I think it's a really good one. When you look at international competition, shooting was so important and, and being able to knock down the three. Then uh, Team USA is going to have KD, Harden, Middleton, Love, Lillard, Booker, Beal, Tatum – that's a lot of shooting. I actually think this team might be pretty pretty dominant relative to Team USA's. A lot of shooting, a lot of good size forwards that could be versatile on this stage. Um, some defense for Team USA. I'm surprised, Adam. I'm surprised yeah. at how many how many quality players they got to sign up. Particularly KD and James Harden, who, I mean, obviously like KD's coming back from that injury. Harden has one right now, so that was that was a little surprising, but. I would just like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I was thinking we wouldn't send too many world beaters. Totally. Uh, but it, it's looking like a squad full of world beaters for sure. Yeah, and that's because this this season was very strange. We have top four teams competing in the in the Western and Eastern finals without any of these guys. The only guy still playing is is Booker. And right. I'm I'm not sure he will be able to to join his teammates, right. but everybody else is already out of the playoffs. So that helped a lot. Yeah, for good sure. Point. Good point. I, I think this team will be pretty darn good. Uh, you never know what the team USA because it's so weird. Like they get, they really do, and especially this year, well, they well they'll be thrown together with almost no practice time. But I, I still think they'll be pretty pretty darn good. And and you're right, there is some defense on there too between Draymond and uh, you know Drew Holiday, Middleton. You know there'll be some of these guys. I think Kevin Durant is the most interesting of all these guys because he just played a pretty exhausting playoff run. He's coming off injury, but that guy. I would not be surprised if Kevin Durant retires in like three years. I, I, I he's he's such a strange guy. He's playing some of the best basketball I've ever seen, but I wouldn't be surprised if he does an Olympics, tries to win one more championship, and then just does a mm. weird MJ like walk away. I would only be surprised because he seems like a guy who just loves basketball. One, two, and three. You know, those are the yeah. those are the top layers for him, and that's probably what this is about. But it's also at risk of sounding. Uh, I suppose arrogant. I guess for KD, like looking at this Olympic burden, it may not be the same thing. Like he, he may be able to go out, have some fun, and get some jump shots up with a really talented team, and not necessarily carry you know a nation on his back. Right. It's a little less of a taxing deal for him. Um, but yeah, I, I'm 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 pleasantly surprised at how good this team is. 
I am laughing at the juxtaposition, though, Miroslav was saying of like the history of some of these teams and preparing your national team so far in advance. And that's, I've always wondered why it is, you know, if the U.S. doesn't send enough uber talented guys, they don't really seem to always rise to the top or play this beautiful brand of basketball. And these teams with significantly less talent or whatever um, look like formidable opponents, you know, all the way through. Yeah, yeah it's it's the FIBA FIBA kind of basketball, and you really need to to bring the top players to be able to be dominant. Because if you only send like six all stars, that's not good enough. That's not yeah. good enough. You need to have some really top tier talent. I was actually thinking that the reason for it is because you know the European teams or southern southern American teams have longer preparations for for these tournaments that that's the reason why why the US team has to be so much better compared right. to the others but we had a really great show with Dino Radzia the hall of famer from Boston Celtics and Croatia and Yugoslavia and he told us no man the real thing is in the NBA you have 25 best players in the world no question asked and after that you have a lot of guys playing out of the NBA that can play on their level, but of course they're not athletic enough and whatever to, to, to hold for the whole season in the NBA. So this is why they're out of there. But their skill level is good enough in one game in elimination. They have a shot against them. This is why you need those top-level guys like Kevin Durant. Like I know I'm, I'm pretty pretty scared of James Harden as well. Well, James Harden, of course, and that is with shorter three-point line and all of that, and especially when you have to help. There's other areas on the court where you have to help off. Like if James Harden gets to attack closeouts or catch and shoot three-pointers, he's pretty good at that. So he's he gets to be his best self offensively. Yeah, this 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 closer three-point line is not such an advantage as you you may think because you can pack the paint more because it is it's less less wide of a of a, of a field of course you can shoot from 30 feet and nobody can guard you but that's but what unless, happens like but my unless favorite, you do that yeah that, this my is why favorite you game get. ever i have to admit it that the time the u.s beat nigeria by like 60 i love that game in large part because darren williams carmelo anthony like everybody was shooting from it looked like so deep those were just regular deep threes in the NBA, you know, a, a yeah. step behind the line. But in FIBA, it looks so deep, and the U.S. was just on fire. So I'm, I'm kind of curious if that'll happen again. I, I hate to admit that I hate super teams in the NBA, but I care so little about international competition that, for me, I kind of get a kick out of, like, <laughs> you know, the Redeem team. And when you, when you see LeBron and Kobe and D. Wade together at their peaks, so it, was, it was fun for me. But – that's because I don't respect the competition. Not that I don't respect it. It's just I don't emotionally attach myself to it that much. That's what I mean. And we don't care, actually, if the team wins the tournament. We we do want to see at least one group play game where Team USA looks like Team USA and Nigeria looks accordingly. It's it's fun, um, but it's it's not this like, ooh, what can this group of guys accomplish together? Right, yeah, yeah, of course. There's no, no meat on that boat. Win one for the Gipper over here. All right, let's take our last break. We have all those topics, though, to get to. I can't wait. I'm actually really excited about all of these topics on the final segment. We'll go a little bit rapid fire. So rapid fire through these through these uh, these ad reads, Kale, uh, vote. Well, I've got to interrupt our program with breaking news, guys. Breaking news. Important PSA brought to you by Manscaped.com. The Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer is now available for purchase in the USA and Canada. Uh, check out Manscaped.com. When you do use code DNVR, you can get 20% off and free worldwide shipping. They've got a bunch of products, not just the trimmers. Um, deodorant, shampoo, boxers that are really smooth. Check out Manscaped. I'm uh, really, really glad I did. Glad we partnered with them. It was something I didn't think about. Now I know how to take care of it. We're also going to talk to you about our friends at DraftKings. DraftKings Sportsbook, I should say, America's top-rated sportsbook app. I love using DraftKings Sportsbook. It's easy to navigate, plenty of instructions for new bettors, and nearly limitless late ways to get in on all the action. They're constantly dropping new deals. There's bet $1 to win $100. There's no-brainers. There's hammer the over. Uh, it's really, really easy to make money and have fun while playing with DraftKings Sportsbook. Right now, they're putting you courtside with a chance to turn $1 into $100 in site credits. You just have to pick a basketball team that's still in contention to win. Might I suggest the Phoenix Suns? If they do, you're taking home $100. Check out DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app, and use code DNVR when you sign up. Download top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code DNVR. 
for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older. Colorado only. New customers only. Wager paid out in site credits. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. And our friend at Solace Meds, they've got a bunch of locations in Colorado. Uh, Wheat Ridge. I know they have one on Colfax. I'm trying to pull up the mat, the ad as I speak, but they've got a lot of great deals. And if you use code DNVR20, you can get 20% off when you walk out the door or when you order online. Uh, check out that Colfax location. They were really great to me. They knew all about DNVR, what we're trying to do. And more importantly, what I was trying to do that evening, they hooked me up with some sweet, sweet marijuana. Check out Solace Med. Use code DNVR20 for 20% off. Oh, all right, back here, final segment. Uh, I'm waiting for – I think the Suns lose game two, and then I'm betting them to win the championship. Yeah. I'm going to wait I'm gonna wait one game, and then I'm betting them. I think the Suns are the best team. I think they only lose two games, one in this round and one in the next round. That's my hot take. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I kind of want to parlay them with the Hawks beating the Bucks. I don't know. I kind of like this Hawks team, although Bogdanovich has to be healthy, and I'm not mm-hmm. sure he's going to get healthy. So – Maybe I wouldn't do that. All right, let's move on to some of these topics. Tonight, the NBA lottery is here. And boy, is there a doomsday scenario for Denver. Maybe you guys disagree, but I think there's a doomsday scenario for Denver. Minnesota owes the Warriors their pick if it's not in the top three, which it is likely not to be in the top three. It's a little bit more likely that it's not in the top, that it's four through 12 or whatever, than it is a top three pick. And there's also a small chance, a very, very small chance, I guess, that Golden State could move up, although maybe not. Actually, I don't, I'm not sure if they can. Yeah, I guess they could. Golden State, it would take a real miracle, but they could move up to four. And then the, you know, the uh, Minnesota could be five, six, seven, somewhere in there. So either scenario, if Golden State gets the fourth pick, whether it's their own or Minnesota's, to me, that is the ultimate doomsday scenario for Denver because I think the Warriors are very good. And if they get a big asset like that, they could pair it with a Wiseman and get a great player and really have this like title contending team that might be better than Denver next year. What do you think about this, Miroslav? It's it's so hard to say how how high of Wiseman other teams are are thinking. I know he was a great prospect before before the his rookie season. Of course, his uh, um, his stock dropped a bit after it. But uh, I, I I was thinking they will probably need to attach Andrew Wiggins as well just to match salaries right. and get the real yep. superstar. Yep. But that shouldn't be a problem for Golden State. <laughs> Why would they hold on to 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 Wiggins anyway? So yeah, yeah, they, that's the they deal. Could. If you have Wiggins, that's your max contract. So now you bring back a max contract guy, and then you give him two Wiseman and four, picks, basically Wiseman and four, and shit, you can give him fourteen if you want. <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. And then you give him that one as well, just as a token thing. But that that's a doomsday scenario because I know how the NBA works. When there is a disgruntled, really good player, other teams will talk themselves into, well, Wiseman could be good, and the number four pick could be good, and. And you, that that gets things done more so than like just a good player. Yeah, imagine if Rudy Gobert would be tra- traded to to San Francisco. Oh man, <laughs> huh? That would that would be really interesting. I I wouldn't be as interested in that. I'd be- <laughs> <laughs> no, I I know you don't like him, but come on, if he has Steph and he has so many so much shooting around him, that that could work. That's the most Draymond. Oh, Draymond, Draymond is scenario. a bad. Yeah, Draymond is actually a bad fit next to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a bad idea. It's so. still really annoying though. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, that's my dream. That's my doomsday scenario. I think Minnesota getting a top pick could also be really tight. I think Minnesota is better than what they showed this year. And once they got Chris Finch, they look like a better team. So they'll have them all year next year. They're another team that I just don't want to give assets to. Here's the thing that happens every year: vote. The West somehow keeps winning the lottery, and all of the best players keep coming to the West. Every year, the pipeline keeps getting replenished. I want this to be the year where nobody from the West wins. They all move down. Dude, I am developing a strange affinity for the Orlando Magic, and that is the team that I want to win this lottery. And because, A, it would be, uh, first of all, you got to help. Get RJ some help. I love RJ. It's a great great foundational piece. Um. And but Gary. also, like, that pick goes to Orlando, and that doesn't change anything for Denver at all. So how yeah. about that? How about that for my dream scenario? Yeah. 
Um, you got them. You've got uh, Chicago. I wouldn't mind our, our old Here, friend. Here's the uh, thing. Chicago can't get too attractive or else we start to get so like great. mildly concerned. You know what I mean? They need to get Mobley or somebody, to, a center, you know, so it's like, hey, you know, there's no need for Jokic in Chicago. It's They've already got their center of the future. That's what we need. Um, you're right about that, actually. Yeah. That is a doomsday scenario is they get all this young talent yeah, three years from now. The most attractive free agent destination. Um, Toronto, Cleveland. Like Cleveland has won so many times. It would be annoying Boring. if they won, but at the same time, it's like has no impact on Denver. And also Cleveland, they can get six number one picks. They'll keep screwing it up. So I'm not too concerned about that. Um, New Orleans is the other team that has a slight chance of moving up. And I would be a little concerned if New Orleans got a big piece. Not necessarily because I think it would make an immediate impact, but even, even as you start to look down the line. Denver competing for championships in 2023? I think so. So does a team like New Orleans or Oklahoma City, can they get too good if they keep winning lotteries? No, no, they won't because Zion will leave. And I hate that because what, from what I've heard, New Orleans is a great city. It's an awesome city. So why, why do people want to leave New Orleans? That's crazy. Well, there's there's a good city, and then there is a good basketball city or marketable city. And New Orleans is a bad marketable city. There's no major corporations there. They, for whatever reason, don't get the like marquee. And then it's also a bad basketball city in that it's a football crazed town. Football I mean, that city. is so such a football. Really, it's not even city. It's a football region. The South is it's NFL and college football one two, and then everything else is like such a distant third. So th that's that's the difference. But it is a great city. I just don't know how much players care about you know, the, yeah. the, the charm of new Orleans. But anyway, is there any other notes you have vote from the lottery tonight? Um, yeah, well, I just, the teams that would bore me, um, Houston, I just find the whole rockets organization boring. You want them to lose too. Like they have an annoying over. Yeah. Just annoying. Um, thunder. Look guys, the process I'm not. I don't love the process. I just don't. Yeah, yeah. I think they're winning. I think Thunder is getting this number one pick, and it will be <laughs> oh, terrible. It will be terrible. It'll be so ten terrible. years of that. Maybe and it'll then, be good if they win, and Adam Silver will be like, "Okay, we can't. We I got to step in like I did with Sam Hinkie. I got to get somebody fired." <laughs> yeah, that yeah maybe. And then uh, Toronto would be kind of cool. It's an interesting team. Like I can't tell how close Toronto is to bat, like very bad or or competitive again. Yeah. Um, so as they sort of hit the reset, maybe add an, an interesting piece. Don't but, give Masai. Don't give Masai any like. Good point. Yeah. Get him off. He doesn't need it, man. Good He's point. good enough. That was all I had, though. Okay. Um, we can move on. You have the the tweet for this one, Kale. Sham Sharania is reporting that the NBA is looking at this. Has been coming. They've been talking about changing some of the rules, or at least looking at them. And here we have. Referees will be trained to properly officiate the following actions that are used to draw fouls. Shooter launches or leans into defender at an abnormal angle. Okay. Shooter kicks leg at an abnormal angle. They're already doing this. They only apply it to Michael Porter, but they do this one already. Um, shooter um, offensive player abruptly whip, veers off path, either sideways or backwards into a defender. Chris Paul, Trey Young. Uh, the Trey Young. This is the Trey Young. But it's also it's also the Damian Lillard. I mean, he did this one a lot. Run off of a screen and then all of a sudden just stop. I love that they are doing this, but this is a double-edged sword. One, mm. completely subjective, these, the, these calls. Like this because I think it takes away the egregious actions, but I'm very curious. My fear with this is I don't think we're going to get what we want out of that. I don't know that this is going to be like universal. This went away. I think it's just going to become more ambiguous. What do you think, Miroslav? I don't think NBA is is getting rid of 50-point games. I think they, <laughs> they want them. So I think these rules will be really, really softly applied to some yeah. second tier players. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, Shaq Harrison, I, don't even think about stopping on a fast break. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I don't expect anything, to be honest. You, you either vote? I, I'm with Miroslav. I mean, first of all, this is take two on the on the pump and lean, right? Didn't we do this five years yes, ago? Yes, we did. So my confidence is low. Uh, but look, just seeing it, just seeing it in writing, seeing it acknowledged, I suppose uh, provides a flicker of hope. Because I do – look, guys, the officiating on the perimeter is, to me, like the my biggest problem with the NBA right now, even more so than the glamour market dynamics and stuff. Like I, there are just games where I'm like, dude, who is watching this entire third – I have to because it's my job, but who is watching this right now? This is not basketball. 
I have a little bit more hope than you guys do that this will have an impact. I, again, I think it'll be ambiguous. I think it'll be frustrating. But if you can just get rid of the egregious ones, I, then I think that you're halfway there. Like you've done a lot. Mm. Now, how much will – I don't know if the league is going to become a center-oriented league or back to a wing. I still think it's going to be a guard-oriented league. But taking away the worst aspects of it is at least a step in the right direction, and we'll see how everybody evolves from it. You've got to be able to better contain the perimeter. It's just nobody can do it right now. It's the thing nobody wants to talk about, but nobody can contain the perimeter right now. And I think the NBA is like, okay, as much as these 50-point games are cool, it's a little ridiculous when you know there's only one type of player that really, truly succeeds. That's but, right. But we'll find out. Um, also, by the way, do you have the uh, – Kale, do you have the Trey Young – uh, Stat Muse put out this tweet that said uh, only great and historic players force the league to make rule changes. And Trey Young said, uh, I'm honored <laughs> or something like honored for Bill because <laughs> he's very clearly one of the players. Hey, you know what? I like it. <laughs> good job, Trey Young. <laughs> Lean into it. Don't be ashamed. That's good marketing. That's good marketing. Oh, great marketing. Um, another thing that came out today, ratings, NBA ratings. The Lakers are out. The Nets are out. You know, we the Golden State Warriors didn't even make it. Ratings are way down. Wait a second. Hold on, Kale. What is this? Am I reading this wrong? Ratings are plummeting, right? Oh, they're up 39%. And Bucks at Nets on TNT had 6.9 million. Giannis, this is insane. Hawks 76 or 6.2. Um the last line, the last line I am very interested in. I think there's a lot of meat on that bone. Global viewership on NBA League Pass up 22%. Okay, that was pretty good. Miroslav, what do you make of this report? Well, first of all, you have no blackouts on, on the League Pass internationally. <laughs> so this yeah. is why people actually want to pay for it. Yeah. And and second of all, I'm a bit surprised that the viewership of the last season was so, so terrible. Me too. Because, you know, everybody was really, really eager to get some sport after a year. Or not year after maybe, half a year. Maybe they weren't. Maybe then. they were, but <laughs> maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. But you know, all that, all that uh, stage without fans, with loud noises, and you know the those those small faces on the screens that that, that just looked stupid. So uh, yeah, maybe maybe that was irritating people, and now we're back to semi-normal games again. So yeah. Uh, I, I would like to, to see them compared to 2019 or 18. Yeah, yeah. Last year is an obvious exception. It, it, first of all, one of the things this does is highlight how silly the reaction to last year's ratings in a vacuum right. were. Now, the gradual decline, plenty to talk about. But that it, that shocking nadir last year, like, look around. Does anything else seem different to you in life right now? Yeah. So it's not that confusing. I have wondered about really quick quick tangent about that sort of discrepancy like sports is a communal thing and even those of us that love to watch sports on our own there's that many more that like to do it in groups with their friends at their buddy's house for football sunday i wonder how few of us there were to like latch on with this one-on-one -on -one, me in my living room thing where maybe for most people sports is about this community stuff and now that's back and now so is the interest I do. It's funny, though, because how many times have we heard, like, the players make the league, not the fans? Like, almost like the fans are just completely irrelevant. And now your number one theory is that there were no fans there, so people, like, didn't do out. That's right. The fans literally drew eyeballs just to see it. And if we're being honest, the fighting stuff aside, that Suns crowd has been so impressive that they actually are a character in this year's playoffs. Like they're a great crowd and every they're so loud and the people in Madison Square Garden had their great crowd like – Sometimes a crowd can become a character in the story, and I think that's important. But here's a take. It's half-baked. I don't know if I really believe this, but I'm kicking it around. Are people tired of LeBron? And are we surprised maybe? Like LeBron's out. Here's the thing I was thinking about. LeBron might win two or three more championships. He might not win any. But no matter what happens, is anybody on earth going to change their opinion about LeBron? The legacy conversation is so tired and boring that I wonder if people just don't care anymore about LeBron's general arc. It could fork in two different directions from here on out, and people don't care, whereas we still have legacy talk with Giannis, with Trey Young, with Chris Paul, with Paul George, but it feels a bit more organic and a bit more, like, just real. I wonder if people are a little tired of LeBron. Yeah, I, I, I just hope LeBron doesn't win a single more title because – that would mean we would have to listen to all of those goat debates again exactly. at the end of the season 
And I really feel for the journalists that have to do it because, you know, you, you cannot miss on the opportunity and nobody wants to do it really. But yeah, yeah. So what if hopefully Space Jam does the, the end. Says Space Jam is coming, but what if Space Jam doesn't do well? Like, I can't separate. Is it that people are excited because there is new blood, you know, like out, out there? Or would LeBron also have drawn these ratings? We'll never know. But I am kind of curious if people are just like, the LeBron story, man, we've been hearing this for eight years. Nobody cares anymore. Last year, the Lakers didn't have to struggle. This year, they didn't even compete. There just was nothing compelling about, in my opinion, I'm a Laker hater, but admitted, Laker hater, but there's just nothing compelling about them to the same degree that there is necessarily with Chris Paul and these Suns, Paul George and these Clippers, Giannis and his Bucks, and then this Hawks wild card team that's just like a feel-good Cinderella team, maybe they're at the end of the road, but at, at least it's fun. I, I wonder if people connect with that or if that's just how I connect with the team and I'm projecting it onto the world. I don't know. And piggybacking off that, I just think there was and is this huge disconnect between advert partners and media partners. Uh, yep. the, the audience is far smarter than they've ever been given credit for by these decision makers. Yeah. These people only want these same three or four things. No, you people only want the same three or four things and you haven't right. talked to the rest of us in quite some time. Uh, turns out people like this game of basketball. So one right. thing I noticed about the postseason, the games were really fucking good. And now yeah. people are watching. And right. maybe that stuff always mattered more than how do we distill it? Is it one name? Is it one brand? Is it one team? And can we capture that in a bottle and sell it? No, it's right. the game of basketball. And it right. always has been. Um, moving, go ahead. Do you have something, Kale? Oh, I was just going to say, as the resident young person here, like all my friends like hate the old guard in general, whether it's yeah. LeBron or Kevin Durant or all that. Like Even KD. So yeah, it's like they're compelled by basketball storylines the same way in the NFL. Like, there's a lot of fun young teams right now. And I think people feel that are real basketball fans feel the same way about the league right now. They like Jokic, they like Trey, they like Giannis. And I think basketball storylines are what people want to follow right now. And not necessarily the drama of is LeBron the goat? Like I'm so sick of that debate. Yeah, totally. I think I, I, I am as well. And I think a lot of people are, and I, I'm, it's funny how much I am weirdly rooting for the Clippers ever since Kawhi went down. And now I'm watching Paul George and I'm like, I kind of like this. Paul George has to do so much, and it's almost like he's become likable, going from very unlikable to suddenly likable. Um, got to keep it moving, though, because we got a couple more here. Uh, the Portland, it sounds like they have three finalists, Chauncey Billups, Becky Hammond, and Mike D'Antoni. I have to be honest. I don't like Carmelo and Nurkic in Portland. I really don't want Chauncey in, in Portland as well. It would. I, I'm fine. It's fun hating on Nurk. It's fun hating on Carmelo. I don't want to have to hate on Chauncey, man. That that one would be too tough for me. What do you what do you think, Vote? Yeah, I, yeah, I'm out on that. Um, I, I don't, you know, that's so funny talking about names like Becky and Chauncey. And like, 99 percent of us have no clue, no clue how they would right. be as a head coach or what they would value or anything like that. But from that standpoint, of Portland being, in my opinion, like Denver's most present and organic rival. Yeah, I don't think you really don't want that. That one would feel a little too weird. Yeah, and That's then all of a sudden, he comes from Denver. He comes from Park Hill. We can't, we, we can't boo him and hate him. This would, this would suck. What do you think, Miroslav? Well, I retweeted a great tweet from Braca Georgievich, famous Serb Serbian journalist today, who said, "I really wish Becky will get the job because she is already a trailblazer." Yeah, it's, it's right. a great story. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. a great story. But she's also a Colorado, you know, her yeah. history here with CSC. So there's all these connections. And then, of course, Mike D'Antoni, he's just such a good coach, like a good offensive coach that I would worry that, you know, he might be too good. So I'm rooting against all of them. I hope there's a wild card that comes out. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's get Brian Shaw connected to Portland. And speaking of which, actually, vote. I'm funny you brought him up because hmm. he is connected to another Denver connection with Arturis. Arturis was part of the group that hired Brian Shaw immediately in Denver, and all of a sudden his name is being linked to the Chicago Bulls along with Steve Clifford and Terry Stotts. This is the shocker of the century, Miroslav. Brian Shaw came to Denver. It was a disaster. Uh, uh, you know, Arturis had a front row seat to it. How on earth is he a finalist? I, I have a, you, know, you see, Brian Shaw was a great playmaker, and I think he deserves a second chance. And I'm really happy that second chance is not with Denver Nuggets. Yeah. But but 
I think he can turn around the narrative around him and I think he could become a great coach uh, if he gets a chance. So I think it's not a close book on him. He he was dealt the worst hand. Like the, the Nuggets made him, yeah. you know, coach the worst team he could possibly try to coach with all these locker room problems and this or that. And he did not do a very good job. But he also had a look. You know how some coaches just have a look of like, I can handle this. He had a look of like, I cannot handle this. Every time he was interviewed, it was like, there's so many things that are overwhelming me right now. And uh, so it's tough. But you know what? Arturis, I trust Arturis. So if he feels like, like Brian Shaw's ready, let's do it. Well, one thing to consider now, the younger players in the league, no longer millennials. So that's right. he doesn't that's have true. to read that book or anything. Um, get a whole new book. Yes, right. Yeah, it's got to start over. But this is a good comment. Um, you know, it's not like Brian Shaw's been sitting at home in the in the interim. Like right. he's been coaching, right? So there, he he might have been developing whatever it is he was lacking. That you know, so it's an interesting. It is just really weird from a Denver spec perspective to see that name up for any job because it could it, it could not have gone much worse, huh? Zach Levine for Ben Simmons. I've seen that one happen. If that somehow does go through, Zach Levine and Jamal Murray, very similar players. You know, LeBron, uh, Jokic and Embiid, obviously, they're different players, but in the same spot. It would make for a really interesting finals matchup that maybe would become one of the great finals of the 2020s if we get it. So, mm -hmm. Miroslav, thank you so much for an hour and five minutes of your time. This was this was great stuff. It was informative. We, might, we managed to not piss anybody off, which, you know, I mean, or if we pissed them off, they kept it to themselves. That's no small miracle. Yeah. You can play oh, that wait. outro music, Kale. You can come on in. <laughs> Go ahead, Miroslav. Always, always here to, to, to give you insight from Serbia and to give you some more historical data from, from, the, from the worldwide basketball. So you're welcome and uh, I'll gladly join you soon enough. Well, I love it. Uh, for all of us here at DNVR, don't forget tomorrow, guys, we're going to be talking a little bit of NBA draft from the Nuggets perspective. So that'll be fun. We'll be in the studio. We got great shows all week. Two o'clock, Mountain Time. That's your new time for the DNBA show. For Vote, for Eric Pidham, for Kale, for Miroslav, for Harrison, for Deb. See everybody tomorrow. Peace.